Most of you would think that I'm underneath the sea. Well, I'm actually in the discovery room with Stacy, the manager of Sandcorp. Very interesting. I've learned so much, Stacy, just standing here and looking at this room. Fun fact, this is actually not a palm tree. It is actually a whale tooth. tooth. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Stacy. So the rehabilitation center, ooh, most of you would think that I'm underneath the sea. Well, I'm here with Stacy, the manager of Sandcorp. Fun fact, this is actually not a palm tree. It is actually a whale's tooth. Right, yes. Stacey? Also known as a baleen plate. I've learned so much just standing here and looking at all these displays surrounding me. So we know that the rehabilit... Ugh. So we know that the Rehabilitation Center does not only rescue penguins, but it also creates awareness for the public. So Stacey, tell me, about, tell me more about the, 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 the creating of the awareness to the public. Well, on a daily basis, we have visitors coming in and we have a tour guide available and we take them through the center and we explain to them about marine life, what's threatening marine life. Yes. We explain to them about what we do. The, rehabilita oh, my gosh. the rehabilitation center is not only a rescue for penguins, but is also known for creating awareness for the public. So Stacey, tell me about more about the programs that you create to run for um, awareness. Well, on a daily basis, we have tours, um, visitors, members of the public, sometimes foreign visitors that come through. Yes. And we have a tour guide available, and we take them through our discovery room where they get to discover more marine life. We also take them through our rehabilitation process and explain to them what happens. And they obviously get to watch our penguins. Awesome. So the visitors, is it all people or just youngsters, the youth? Complete range. So awesome. it ranges from tiny babies and toddlers oh, to wow. elderly people. And we also have a lot of school groups coming through. So we have an education department and we have schools that come in for lessons okay. and they specifically choose whether they want to hear about penguins or if they want to hear about marine debris awesome. or yeah okay so well you know that um the youth can sometimes take education as to be so dull so how do you guys interact with them what do you guys do to interact with them are there activities here around in the discovery room outside the discovery room what do you guys do to interact with them well nothing here is boring for okay, a little kid good. um they definitely enjoy touching and feeling they're allowed to touch whatever they want in yes. this room so you don't often get to go and pet a penguin so yes. it's quite nice for them to feel what the feathers feel like we've also got other diff other species of birds and mammals around that are stuffed so they can feel what the fur feels like awesome um, we also have the beach nearby and we're situated in a nature reserve which is very very special so we incorporate a beach cleanup into every lesson so they go onto the beach and they discover marine life in the rocks and in the on the beach and then they also pick up litter while they're doing that wow talking about penguins I know that outside you guys have a penguin um, a pool so how do you guys rescue the penguins is there a system a program for rescuing the penguins um, we have different ways they come to us uh, the most common way is either through sand parks or through members of the public. Okay. So we have a rescue line and they can, anybody can phone and say, I've seen a penguin on a beach, please can you come and fetch it? Or I've seen a gannet on a beach, can you come fetch it? We rescue any seabirds. Oh, wow. um, we also have sand parks rangers who phone us from the islands yes. and they do patrols on the islands in the colonies oh, wow. and they will let us know when we have an injured penguin. So we have oh. a new one coming in tomorrow morning and they come by boat. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. So tell me more about how this works. Okay, so we've got all these strands in the yes. baleen plate. They filter out microscopic food from the ocean water. Oh, wow. So basically they'll open their mouths and they'll let water flow through their teeth or through the baleen plate and then their food filters out through that and they can swallow what they've collected. Oh wow, that is beautiful. Um, so tell me about, um, you know, we see that when penguins are small, their feathers are brown. And then when they grow up, they become a bit lighter, they become whitish. So tell me about how that, how that body change, change happens. happens, yes. So when they're born, they're what we call fluffies. They're very, very fluffy. They've got a soft yeah. down that covers them to keep them warm in the nest. 
at about three months old, they molt into this sort of feather, yes. which is sort of Very like a bluish gray color. Yes. And we call these a blue, and they stay like that for about a year. And then at a year old, they molt into their adult tuxedo. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Stacey, for having us today. I believe that we have learned so much from Stacey and just looking at this environment that we are. Stay in tune with SABC3. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so tell me more about what this does. Okay, so this bathing plate, basically, yes. the whale will open its mouth to let a little bit of water flow through here. And then the microscopic food that's in the ocean, so plankton, will get yes. stuck in the baleen plate. Oh, wow. And then they filter it out of the water, basically. Oh, wow. So um, I know that when penguins are small, their feathers are brown. And, and as they grow up, their feathers become a little bit lighter. So tell me about that, that body change. Okay, so when they're first born, they're yes. very, very fluffy. And they have a soft down that covers them. This keeps them warm in the nest. And they also don't need to swim yet because mom okay. and dad are feeding them, yes. so they don't need to have waterproof feathers. Um, at about three months old, they molt into this type of plumage, which Very is lovely soft. and waterproof. Yes. Um, at this stage, we call them a blue or a juvenile, depending on how old they are. And um, it's because they have sort of a bluish shimmer to their, to their feathers. Awesome. And then at about a year old, they molt into their little tuxedos. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Stacey, for having us. Thank you very, very much. So stay in tune with SABC3. Thank you. Uh, I didn't say that correctly. Thank you very much, Stacey. I know that we have learned so much with just looking at our surroundings. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Thank you very much, Stacey. I know that we have learned so much at just looking at our surroundings. And we, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Thank you very much, Stacey. I know that we have learned so much about the penguins and everything that is surrounding us. Stay in tune with SABC3. Thank you very much, Stacey. I know that we have learned so much in just looking at our surroundings and with Stacey telling us more information. Stay in tune with SABC3.